All right, I have been so excited to show you this palette. I've been putting it a lot on social media and everyone's saying, where did you get that? Tell me about it. And I, I mean, I'm obsessed with it. You know how I get. I get obsessed with different things at different times. So um, I'm gonna show you exactly how I put it together. And everything I think that I'm showing you is either there are links to it either in my Blick art supply um, store or my Amazon one. And I simplified everything and on my website at SuzanneAller.com, you just hit supplies and it'll give you, you can shop wherever you want. But I finally got the Amazon one organized and surprisingly, um, I don't know, some of the prices are better there. But I will, let's go through this and I'll show you all about it. So I started with this metal tin and I named it Happy Colors. And this one, let's see, is this, this the one that I linked to because I liked it better, yeah. So this one came with the half pans, these are called half pans, the empty ones. So you can buy these palettes um, you know, at art supply stores and other places and they already have the colors in them. And that doesn't really work for me because they're not really the colors I want and I wanna mix my own colors and really make it mine. Uh, so that's why this is really appeals to me. If you're just starting out, you know, one of those sets that's the pre-mixed colors is fine. Um, I started with those. But if you want to have some fun, <laughs> this is like, this reminds me of candy making like I used to do with our kids or like um, cake baking and cake decorating. I mean, oh my gosh, so yummy. So there are, these are called half pans and they're the little bitty ones that are this size. And then there are full pans, which I'll show you I did in my other palette. And they're twice as big as the half pan. Makes sense, right? And so here's the thing. The first one that I bought and made, put this one here, was this one. And you notice a, a slight difference in why I like this one better. This has these metal um, holders. Do you see these along here? And this one doesn't. Um, and that's because this one is meant to use just with the pan and no magnet. Okay, but I went through and added magnets because what happens is, let me figure out, let me get this. What happens is like these little metal things, let me show it to you without the, well, actually, it's in the new one that we're going to do. It's kind of, it's this style. So you're supposed to basically pin it between here, and then you squeeze this tab, and it holds, technically, it holds that in. And it, it, it actually has. I have not put magnets on these, most of these. But then I went through on this one, and these are all held in place by magnets, which I just like better for a lot of reasons. Um, mostly because then I can reorganize them, you know, by color. Like, let's say, where'd my little paper clip go? Probably should get a pair of tweezers to have in my studio for this. But I can move these around easier. Once you, once you pin these in with the metal, they can, they are, you know, just harder to move around. You have to pull the metal tab back and loosen it. And then, you know, I've gotten my, you get your fingers in it anyway but you know kind of loosen it like that and try to get it out and this I can just you know get like a cute or a, this is a paper clip or something and kind of pop the magnet loose and get it out and say that I want you know oranges over here or something so I just find it easier to work with I think I fit yeah I definitely fit more in here too because this is five rows and this is only four rows so the one that i put the link to in um on the amazon store is this one on the blick store they only have this one so i just want you to know the difference 
And same with the one that we're going to fill today. It's this one with the two metal pieces. But I'm going to use the magnets just to show you. We're just going to kind of ignore these metal holder thingies. But the way it would work technically, I'll show you before I put paint in it, it just gets messy. You put it in there, put your, you know, put your paint in, put it in, and then you bend this and pin it between this ledge and this tab. And it, it does stay put when you have them all in there, but the magnets are just, for me, easier to go with. Okay, so that was that's about the tin itself. They're called tins, and I really like how, and you know, you can tell I've been using this as the palette. I also use my other you know, palette paper. But I wanted to show you how I put the paint in them and mix the colors. And so I got another one, which is, I think this has room for 24. I think it's gonna be 12 and 12, unless we stick um, one of these full pans in, which I probably will because I do that for white. Um, I've also seen people who just use so, you know, we all use so much white that you just bring a tube of white and don't use white in your palette. But I wanted this to be able to be something I could take somewhere and have everything I needed, at least for something quick. Um, all right, so we're gonna fill that one. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you about the way these work. As far as closing them, so I found you know, I just do it this way and then this way. Um, the other thing I've learned is that if I want to keep them dry, I mean, wet a little longer, I'll take that Glad Wrap, you know the one? Let me get, let me get some. The sticky Glad Wrap. This one. And I'll put it over the top. So I left this row dry just to show you because I haven't used this this one in a while. So I'm going to show you how I'll just, let's say I want to paint a little bit later or just even in a few minutes. Um, I do use distilled water. I have found that not in these because they're not airtight, but in my airtight palette that mold could grow. So. Once I switch to distilled water, that never happens, so I just figured I'm going to keep, keep with that. So I only put a little bit to re-wet them because I don't want my, my paint too watery and I can always add, but this lets them sit there, you know, and you can do this every few days if, if you want to keep them nice and moist or you can um, just do it before you paint, you know if you think about it a few minutes before. If you don't, and it's not a big deal, let's say it's completely dry and you want to paint, you're just gonna take your brush, wet it, and start to reactivate your paint. Now, this is gouache, not aqua gouache. And you guys know I use aqua gouache a lot. So I don't recommend these, this, any of this for aqua gouache. The reason is, it's acrylic, so once it dries in here or on here, um, it's permanent. And then you have, you know, these like, you have to, you'd have to keep it wet all the time. You could try it, you'd have to keep it wet and you just have to babysit it. And so I just don't, I just, it's too, I've tried, not this particular palette, but I've tried it in an airtight palette and the acrylic just, dries on the sides of the little, um, what are these called? Not vessel. Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it dries on the sides, it dries, and it's just a mess. That's the, you know, it's just hard to pick, right? Gouache or aqua gouache. I love them both um, for different reasons. And so if you could have the aqua gouache be able to be reconstituted with water, then that would be really cool, but then it wouldn't be aqua gouache. And in case you don't know the difference, regular gouache is basically a watercolor. It can be reconstituted with water. I can take right here, right now, even though it's been weeks, and get this yellow 
reconstitute it just like that and paint with it, which is magical. Um, there's so many practical reasons that's great. If, for example, if I'm working on, let's say I've painted something like this and I decide, um, and I've saved the palette paper or I have this like this, and this has happened many, many times and I say, oh, God, I wanna put some more of these yellow dots and there's that color and I just reactivate it and go with it. So it has the colors that you, you know, if you save the surface, even if it's just palette paper, which you've seen me use, I've talked about, it's just, uh, well, that's on my supply list too, but palette paper is just a, a slick paper that you can use as to mix your paints on and it won't absorb the paint. Um, and that way you, I'll, I'll save those sometimes. Like if I'm done, if I think I'm done with something like this, I'll save the paper, palette paper that went with it if it's gouache, and then I have it, that color ready to go if I wanna make some adjustments. That's the main benefit of gouache over acro gouache. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to cover that in case somebody wasn't clear on that. So, back to this. Let's say I want to keep this wet for a few days. Or even just, I've wet it and I'm gonna be painting tonight. I take this sticky, and you could use regular um, plastic wrap if you don't have this sticky one. This one's called press and seal. But I'll just take it like that and seal the little area. And that's it. And it'll get nice and wet and stay that way until several days. All right. By the way, if you have any questions, hopefully they're going to show up here. I don't see any yet, but say hello. Oh, the camera went black. We have to find out why that's happening. I don't know why that's happening. Why are you doing that, <laughs> Canon? Um, if somebody knows, let me know, because it's not, it, I've turned off, it's a Canon, the, my face camera is a Canon R7, and I have turned off the timeout setting, so it shouldn't be timing out. All right, let's get to some fun stuff. So, supplies. You've got to have your, pal, your tin with your pans, and again, I've got all this. For you the same exact things I used. I've got the tins, the um, pans, and then since, so if you get this one, which is the one I recommend, it comes with, that's the other great thing, it comes with the half pans, I think like 40, it was a big bag, it was plenty for here. It did not come with the full pans, I had some of those, and, um, and it came with the magnets. So you really get the whole set, and I think on Amazon it was $20, which is amazing. This one, I don't get it. Um, it's really expensive. It's on Blick. Schminky. I, I, I don't understand why it was so expensive. Um, I, I just don't. Because um, I don't even, like I said, I like this one without the rose better. But... That's the only one. No, I found a cheaper one on Blick, if you'd rather shop there. I did find one that's more like this. Uh, I don't think you need to spend the money for the schminky or sh schminky. Sorry, schminky. Um, all right, so this. You can take this out, although in this one it won't be like that. I don't think. Oh yeah, it is. That's right, I did. It's been a few weeks since I put this together. And the one that I hope you get, which is this one, which gives you lots of, lots of room, it's a tray here. Can you see that? Like so, comes out. And that did make it easier to manage. It's just a metal tray with two little handles. And so I took it out and then I built this. So we'll do the same thing. On this one though, that has the little metal things, this one won't, if you get that one, but this one, I'm just gonna push them away to kinda get rid of them, because I'm really not gonna use them for what they're intended. I'm not gonna use them to hold in my pans. I'm gonna use magnets. 
and magnets that I ended up buying for this and the schminky that doesn't come with magnets. You won't need to though if you get this one. I hope I'm not confusing you. Basically, I bought the expensive one that doesn't come with the pans or the magnets and then I found one that I like better for a half the price that comes with the pans and the magnets. So, but I already filled it, so I have to show you on this one. These are little square magnets. I already put one here. All right, so let me show you how I mix my colors. That's the fun part. This is where you can listen to a podcast or, gosh, all kinds of things. Um, let me make sure, because I had one of these bags, they were a little bit bigger than the others, and I was, I did not, oh, yeah, maybe see, I just want to get them the same size, okay, these are the little bit bigger ones, and then I put the magnets on first, I did all this the hard way when I started, um, I put the paint on them and then I realized, oh, I should have put the magnet on first. So I was putting it on, a, you know, upside down. You know, that kind of stuff, trial and error stuff. Yeah, these are the same size. I don't even know now. Maybe they are, maybe they are the same size. I kind of thought when I put, when I added some that some of them are a little bit shallower. No, they're the same. Okay, so let's get some more magnets on and then I'll show you how we mix. Ah, I've been wanting to do this video for so long. We are moving, as I guess I keep talking about, and it's distracting, especially when I'm having to decide. It's actually making me organize everything though. You know how that happens. Make even my studio, which is like the biggest thing to pack up in my house, really. <laughs> Certainly the biggest room with mo the most things. I don't mean the largest room, but just the most things. Okay, that'll get us started. And then, so now these are gonna, and it's not super powerful, the magnet, but it does, it, it, it's much more on this one, uh, this palette, because this has this level of, or this metal here that's not as is, is, um, magnetic. And then what I do is find my colors, I've got, um, Right now, I would say, and I'm probably gonna stick to this, I've got four brands that I like. I just added one. So the ones, the three that I've been using most are the Windsor Newton. Oh, hey, you're in Vienna. Are you in Vienna, Austria or Vienna? Let me show you, by the way, I probably should have started with this, the kinds of things I've been painting with the gouache. So it lends itself to really, oh, I just love, um, and I've been drawing more, and I, I am gonna do a class on this, but in fact, I might do a class with this actual drawing because I think it'd be kind of fun to learn on that people, you can, you can um, choose whatever color scheme you want or change it, but gouache gives you that chalky, just like the Afro gouache, but that incredibly opaque color and it scans beautifully because there's no, sh um, no gloss in it. So that, and then this one I painted completely with this happy colors. <laughs> it's so funny that I, I had to distinguish that one from this one when I was grabbing one and I didn't realize that this one said that, so that would have distinguished, but these colors are just as happy, so. <laughs> I have happy colors one and happy colors two. Should I make like a somber colors? I don't think I have it in me. And then this one also is with this happy color palette. But 
what it allows me to do is, oh, let's see what else. This one I'm working on. You can see that I've just been really into more specific, intricate designs. Um, and maybe we'll get some time to paint a little bit, but that might have to wait. So the idea with this little one is that I wanted to make this more of a travel. So now I've got to think, okay, I want my essential colors in here. I may not be able to mix so many of the shades that I like because I need to make sure I have my basic lemon yellow, my basic yellows, reds and pinks and blues. Those are the things you always want to have with you. Austria on vacation, living in Dallas. Oh my gosh, that sounds fun. How do you like Austria? We are hopefully going to meet our son in Europe in about a month. I, my husband came up with this idea and I just said, okay, if you plan everything, cause I am overwhelmed already and I, I don't want to plan anything and he's doing it. We'll see, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, usually I find the lodging when we have a trip, I take care of all the details. He's doing everything. He and my daughter are working together. So, um, cause our son's kind of doing a backpack walkabout and all through Europe. So we're going to figure out where to meet him and in between in the middle of his trip. So I'll let you know if hubby does a good job on the planning. I'm not going to complain though, because I am so thrilled to not have to do any of it that I don't really care. I'm not going to whine about anything. You heard it here. All right, so let me start with yellows. I am going to do like a lemon yellow. So my, the essential colors, you want to make sure you have a little bit of a range of your yellows and then your pinks to reds and then your say blues and turquoises. With that and white, you can make anything. And it's a really good exercise. So I'm actually not gonna mix for this one because it's a good lemon yellow. I don't need to change it. Um, I'll fill it a little bit more. But I'm gonna show you the secret weapon that I learned from, oh gosh, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to pronounce her name, Malin. She's an artist in England, Malin, and starts with a G. And she turned me on to this honey water tip. So first of all, it makes it such a great experience. Um, oh good, you made yourself aqua. Okay, why isn't, oh, I know why I put that too far up there. So this is honey water. Um, this is a four ounce dropper that I had left over from something else. And there's about a teaspoon of honey in here. Now I will say a couple of tips on this because I had it go wrong. When I first did it, I took some, like some old honey and just tap water and I did it and it worked great in my paints, but the bottle itself started to grow some mildew in it. So I basically boiled the jar, cleaned it out really well. And then I took boiled water and a brand new jar of honey and got the teaspoon. And so we're doing better now. And I'm just gonna put two or three drops of the honey water in there. And you're gonna ask, why are you putting honey water in there? Well, first of all, it smells amazing. <laughs> so it's just a nice, that's not why, but that was a nice added benefit. But apparently it helps preserve it and also make it more creamy. And also when it go, when you go to, um, reconstitute it, it's just less likely to be kind of cracky and powdery. So yeah, I was telling my mom about it and she said, well, that sounds good unless you have an ant problem. And I thought, oh, well, that's true. I don't have an ant problem, but. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. Now I'm gonna go with a yellowy by the way, I guess I'll give you these colors. This is the Holbein Lemon. I forgot to tell you my brands. I'm jumping around. Okay, Holbein, these are all regular gouache. Holbein is one of my favorites. 
Winsor Newton is another favorite. I also love Turner. Now, those two are at one price point, which is higher. This gets a little cheaper, quite a bit cheaper, really. Because if I think about it, these are, I think, 15. I think these tubes are 15, 14 ml. Yeah. The Hobing gives you a little bit more, 15 ml. And they tend to be, depending on the color, in the eight to twelve dollar range. These are cheaper, and it's twenty five ml, so you get more paint for less, and they really are good. Um, I just did. I don't have it in here. Uh, one last night with the Turner. Then I have added, and I'll do a. I'll do some swatching of these colors in another video. The Royal Talons, um, made in the Netherlands. And this is also a really nice gouache, really creamy. So those are the four. And in these palettes, I'm mixing whatever I want, whatever colors I want. So I'm not worrying about, and I, I mix within brand, or outside of brands too. So here's a nice warm yellow, this is called Caria Haponica Yellow. Probably easier to, if you want the color, to look at the number, which is G821. But all you need is a warm yellow. You need, you need a cool yellow, which is often called lemon, and then a warm, which can be sometimes called deep yellow. Sometimes they'll call it a deep yellow. But isn't this fun? Just, I don't know. It does something for me. What can I say? It literally, I find this process stress relieving. Just looking at the yummy colors. Okay. And where's my paper towel? The toothpick, I forgot to mention these toothpicks. You can use any old toothpicks, but I did stick these in the supply list because I found them easier to stir with. They just have a different shape at the end. I guess they're ornate. I don't know. The regular toothpicks are fine. They're just so pointy that it seems like you have to stir more. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add this Cork Yellow, G825 by Holbein, because I just got it, ooh, and it looks yummy. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna be using that. And I have to say, even though I'm addicted to, I'm as addicted to the next person to buying paint colors, that um, even though I'm not mixing these right these colors so far, I will end up mixing them when I paint. I don't like to use, generally, color right out of the tube for, on a painting. And it's because even if I add just a little bit of something, it makes it mine. It's just, it's just a thing. I'd rather make the colors mine. So almost all the colors in this other palette are mixed. Okay, and you don't need to keep using a, a different toothpick. I just, especially if we're in the same color family, I can wash them off and clean them off. Or you can use a different one, whatever you want to do. Just don't use like a yellow, you know, one with yellow in it on your pinks. All right, let's go with, um, I'm gonna mix one so I can show it to you. So I've got a big thing of white here. Use, you'll use white more than anything when you're mixing. And actually, you know, I think it might be nice to mix a light version of this. Let's do that, this cork yellow. I 
First, I'm just gonna use a little bit of the color so I can see that how it's turning out. So, where else are you watching from? So that's all I do, and if I'm gonna mix three colors, I wouldn't mix more than three, but this is how I made my, my variety of greens, my peaches and reds. And I just went with colors that, I, that I'm drawn to, that I like to use, or maybe colors that I haven't used and I wanna try more of. See, now that's a little too, um, bright. So I'm going to do something to subdue it a little bit and make it a little more interesting. So when you want to subdue a color, and by the way, I always forget to talk about this. I, I have my, I'll put the links in the description or the link to my free color mixing class. That's, um, it's an ebook I wrote. Well, it's like 12 pages but with some tools in it, and then you get a video each week for I think seven weeks. So it's a full online class that I'm just giving away. Um, and in there I talk about color a lot more, but to subdue a color, you do something, you put something in it that's opposite on the color wheel, which yellow is generally uh, purple, is gonna be opposite. Let's just try a tiny bit of this lilac. I don't wanna to use too much. You have to be really careful when going across the color wheel to subdue a color. A little goes a long way. That was a really pale um, purple, so it isn't doing as much as it would if it's a dark purple. I have a a dark violet over there. What it's gonna do is take it, yeah, it did tone it down though. I think I might leave it there. It just, the opposite of the color wheel, which is called the complementary color, will subdue a color. But make sure you sign up for that class. People are really enjoying it. Okay, that goes here. We're done with the cork yellow. That's probably a good enough range of yellows. I can always I can always add depending on how my room ends up. You could be more planful and really, you know, plan out your colors, but that's that's not me. <laughs> um, I'd rather just do it this way. So this is a beautiful color that I'm going to have. Do I want to make a paler version? I did in here, but probably in this one I won't have room. This is Pale Coral G812. A tiny bit more. I can't remember if I put Honey Water in that pale version, did I? I think I might not have. See, I knew this was gonna go long. That's okay. I'll do a few more and then you'll have the idea and on how to do your own. So when you're stirring, you know, you'll just, if your gouache is fresh, like these are, it's much easier. But I've done it where, you know, it's a gouache tube that's old and kind of dried out and if that happens it's easiest to just put a little bit of it in the in the little half pan and then some water and let it sit there a while because it just takes a while these are nice and fresh though all right so now i'm going to continue to go down that red path and i'll probably switch to some blues which will take me to here. Then I'm gonna mix some greens. 
because I usually mix greens and, I'll, and then I'll have enough to put my full pan of white. That's good. That's my plan. Yeah, that'll work, I think. So good. I hope this has gotten you excited about creating because um, it's so that it's so personal. You know, this way you can create the colors you love and that you want to use or that just and if you don't really know what those are, literally it's the colors that make you go <gasps> <laughs> that you just go, oh, I love that. Like this blue. Oh, you know, those, that feeling, those are your colors. So I hope that you do this and remember that you can get it on Blick, but you have to, and they had the half pans, these guys, but they were more expensive. And then I couldn't find the magnets. So, you know, just wherever you go, either look for the, the tin that comes with the magnets and the half pans like I found on Amazon or if you don't have access to Amazon or that link or you're in another country you know what you're looking for I think to make it easiest is the tin the pans and the magnets and then you can just make this beautiful thing and paint anytime you want I will say the other thing I do uh, let's say I've painted these are kind of wet but they're dried out a little bit, but not so dry that I don't want to take my distilled, you know, I don't want that much water. A couple things you can do. You can get these pipettes um, and you just, then you can control more a drop. I also have this little, and I did put this stuff in the supplies too. These are actually little cosmetic misters and this one that did say distilled is my distilled and I'll just give it a spray. So that way you can put, you don't want them getting too watery, that way you can control how much water you're adding. Um, let's see, I'm trying to decide if there's enough time to paint. Uh, this is one I'm drawing, but this one is more involved. I have to get out my inspiration photos and work on this one. This one is a new sketchbook I'm trying out. Well, we could, I gotta fix that a little bit. All right, so let's vote. I really like how this looks, but I'm gonna add some details, but I don't wanna add too many details. So I'm thinking of just adding some detail on these three leaves and leaving the rest of it. What do you think? This one, well, you know, we could paint that little piece. Let's do that. Just so we can finish with some painting. And this little bit right here, which I have to figure out what color would be good. Mm, maybe it'd be good to tie in this turquoisey color, but not too intense. Maybe a pale kind of turquoise. Let's try that. It's a piece of glass that I have here. It's actually, um, I put that in supplies too because it's, I've seen these people buy these um, glass palettes and spend a lot on them. And this is just a glass cutting board and it works great. That's too bright. I don't want too much attention going to here and I'll tell you why composition wise it's pointing off the page and we'll have to see how that looks when it's painted but that's generally not something you want to do this brings you onto the page and you kind of look around here and then it's fine to go off then but you don't want the viewers eye to go off before they're done enjoying the painting you want them to stay on the painting what I could have done, I've done this before, is modified it so that it's curved down so that nothing leads you off the page. But this was a sketchbook mess around. So we'll see. All right, I wanna tone that color down a little bit. So I'm gonna get a tiny bit of red. 
tiny bit. Tiny bit of orange, maybe. Still not toned down enough. That's gonna be too much. Okay. Let's see. Beauty of gouache is you can always paint over it. Even if you're painting, you want to paint light over dark, you can do that. It's turning out more green. I'll need more paint. It was too watery. What ends up happening is that, and it's fine if you want a watercolor effect with gouache, but I wasn't looking for that here. I'm gonna do a video soon on sketchbooks. Another one because I've been experimenting with different ones other than the moleskin and just, you know, seeing what's out there. So what I'm going to do to keep that from going off the page is end it there and then I'll go back with some pink and fill that in. The other thing I can do is put it, make it brighter here at this end. We're naturally drawn to brighter, more saturated colors. All right. Well, at least we finished with a bit of painting. All right. Happy creating. Let me know what you think of the palette and if you have fun with it. Next, see you next time. Oh.